Bishop Edward Fenwick is called the Apostle of Ohio. He was Cincinnati's first bishop and he founded Xavier University and St. Xavier High School. But historians have uncovered more about his past that challenges the legacy he left behind. Not on your sides, Lisa Smith re explains recent revelations connecting Bishop Fenwick to slavery. Far from the banks of the Ohio River, a small group of Xavier University students visit the shores of the Atlantic Ocean in the West African nation of Senegal, where slaves once boarded ships. The experience is part of a move toward healing and reconciliation for Xavier University to know more about the school's past and its founder, Bishop Edward Finwick. I think I suspected that we had some story I didn't know what it would be. Xavier President Father Michael Graham's suspicions were right. Church historian Dr. Walker Goller did the research, tracing Finwick's family back to Maryland, where he was born in the 1760s. He inherited some property that his father had given him through his will, and that property inclu included some slaves. Dr. Goller believes Finwick wasn't actively involved with slaves while studying for the priesthood in Europe. But after returning to Maryland in the early 1800s, he sold all his land and most of his slaves. Kept two of them and used that money to purchase some land down in central Kentucky along with some more slaves. That's where Finwick built a church and convent called St. Rose. Beautiful piece of property and it was built by Fenwick's slaves. In Xavier's archive room, Goller showed us some of the handwritten records from St. Rose. It says, I baptized Julian, uh, servant is what the word, that's usually what it would be, but it means slave. Eventually, Fenwick moved north to Cincinnati, where he became the first bishop of a new diocese, and in 1831 started the Antineum, which is now Xavier University and St. Xavier High School. He died the following year. Later, Jesuits took over Xavier. Subsequently, in talking with Dr. Goller, I learned that the story didn't end there. And what Father Graham learned is that in those early years, Xavier developed a pipeline of students to boost enrollment and the school's finances. Part two of my story will air tonight at 7, and I'll show you how a school trip to Senegal is helping with the healing process.